یہ تھے محترم جناب جمشید اعظم چشتی صاحب جو کلام اقبال سے آپ کو محظوظ فرما رہے تھے ہمارے درمیان ایک ایسی شخصیت جنہوں نے جامعہ کراچی سے فلسفہ میں ایم اے کیا جنیوہ سے بین الاقوامی تعلقات میں ایم اے کیا ٹرینیڈا ویسٹ انڈیز سے بھی بین الاقوامی تعلقات عامہ میں پوسٹ گریجویٹ ڈپلوما حاصل کیا اسلام پر بہت گہری نظر رکھتے ہیں پوری دنیا میں دعوت اسلام اور تبلیغ اسلام کے لیے سفر کرتے رہتے ہیں شمالی امریکہ میں تنظیم اسلامی دعویٰ کے ڈیریکٹر محترم جناب عمران این حسین صاحب تشریف لاتے ہیں اپنے پر مغز خیالات کا اظہار کرنے کے لیے محترم جناب عمران این حسین صاحب الحمدللہ وکفا والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم إلى آخر الآية سورة النساء أن الله سبحانه وتعالى declares He commands O oh, you who possess Iman, obey me. Obey Allah. Primary obedience is to Allah. And therefore supreme authority belongs to Allah. And obey the messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and therefore conditional on recognition of Allah's authority as supreme now obey the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and obey those in authority from within the Muslim community. Obey your Amir. Conditional, conditional on prior obedience of Allah and of His Messenger. Respected President of this international Khilafat Conference, Dr. Israr Ahmad, respected ulama, distinguished guests, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This verse of the Quran led to the establishment of a political system which may best be described by the word Khilafa. The substance of that political system was that it recognized Allah's authority as supreme. The substance of that political system was that it recognized Allah's law as the supreme law. The essence of that political system was that if Allah made something haram, no one could make it halal. And therefore, the foundation of that political system was that it recognized Allah's sovereignty. 
that foundation remained with us until 1924. Even though the Kursi had become Malukiyat. And in 1924, it disappeared. Had the Khilafat not been abolished in 1924, it would have gone in 25. It would be gone in 26. It could not last. Because something so powerful was unleashed into the world that nothing could stand in its way. So the Khilafat had to go. Who destroyed it? How was it destroyed? What was it which took its place? And how did the world of Islam respond to the destruction of the Khilafat? What is important is that we understand very carefully what was it which replaced the Khilafat. It was the modern secular nation state. The modern secular nation state did not recognize Allah's authority is supreme. It is the authority of the state which is now supreme. And that is shirk. The modern secular nation state did not recognize Allah's law as supreme. It is the law of the state which is now supreme. And that is shirk. And therefore the modern secular nation state around the world no longer recognize Allah's sovereignty. Sovereignty is now located in the state and that is shirk. The modern nation state proceeded around the world to take everything which Allah had declared to be haram and to make it halal. Nothing is now left and that is shirk. Let us quote from the Quran, Surah to tawbah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اتخذوا أحبارهم they took their priests and their rabbis as lords and gods beside Allah. Well, Masih ibn Maryam. And they did the same thing with the Messiah, the son of Mary. But they had not been commanded other than to worship one God. La ilaha illah. There is no God beside him. Subhanahu. Glory be to him. Amma yushrikun. Far removed is he from this act of shirk. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, but the Christians don't worship their priests and the Jews don't worship their rabbis. How could Allah say this? Your prophet and mine, he replied and he said, Did they not make halal what Allah had made haram? That is their shirk. Has the Republic of Pakistan, I refuse to call it an Islamic Republic because it is not. Has the Republic of Pakistan not legalized riba for 50 long years? Have you not been borrowing money on interest? Legalizing is legal. Anybody can go and borrow money on interest. And when we attempt to close the front door, they open the back door. Back door riba now. That is shirk. And so this 
is the foundation of what replaced the Khilafah. How long will it last? Not forever. Why did the Khilafah have to go? For two reasons that I can think of. Number one, when they boasted of how they killed him, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ they boasted of how they killed him. This is the worst of all deeds ever committed. And so the punishment has to be the worst of all. And the punishment Allah is going to give it to them before Qayyamat. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُّومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ Before Qiyamah, they're going to pay for it. Where will they pay for it? فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ بَفِيفَ Allah is going to bring them back to the Holy Land. And they're going to pay for it in the Holy Land. The strangest event ever to have occurred in the religious history of mankind is the return of the Jews to the Holy Land. That return of the Jews to the Holy Land could not have been achieved if the Khilafat was in existence. It would have resulted in the slaughter of millions and millions and millions of people. But there's another reason why the Khilafat had to go. To test us. How many of us will go on board that ship? The ship of shirk. And pledge our loyalty to the modern secular nation state. And how many of us will remain faithful to Allah? This is called fitan. When will the Khilafah come back? There is a link between the return of the Khilafah and Isa alayhi salam. I am surprised that that hadith is not here. It is Bukhari. Listen to it. It is so short you can memorize it today. Kayfa antum? How will you be at that time? إِذَا نَذَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ نُمَرْيَمْ When the son of Mary will descend amongst you. وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ And your Imam, your Khalifa, your Amir, will be from within the Muslim community, meaning that prior to this, your Imam, your Khalifa, your Amir will not be from within the Muslim community, Security Council of the United Nations. Secondly, that the Khilafah is going to come back. Thirdly, that the return of the Khilafah is linked with Isa alayhi salam, his return. How will we know? that the time has come and the countdown has begun this is the most important point I want to make today the Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the hadith is in Sahih Muslim try to memorize it it comes from Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah who says that the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَهُودِ You will fight the Jews. وَلَتَقْتُلُنَّهُمْ And you will kill them. حَتَّى يَقُولُ الْحَجَرِ At that time, the stones will speak. يَا مُسْلِمْ هذا يهودي ورائي او مسلم هذا جو هايدنج بيهايند مي 
فتعال فاختل come and kill him it is in Sahih Bukhari it is in Sahih Muslim it is muttafakun alayhi they can't shake this hadith not even with a bulldozer my question is when the stones begin to speak to speak with which ears will we hear it and will this be the first time that the stones would speak huh do you remember when huzur to Islam used to go in the wilderness and he would hear the stones speaking and offering salams Haji? and the trees offering salams remember huh why are you so quiet of course you remember it. if you and I were there with him would we hear it huh no no we would not hear it. why because he's not hearing it with his ears do we have any other ears besides these ears do we have any other eyes besides these eyes these are the two most important questions you and I can ask until Qiyamah no until the return of Isa al -Islam. do we have any other capacity for hearing other than with these ears do we have any other capacity for seeing other than with these eyes to answer that question you need a man of the spiritual eminence of my teacher Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah and his teacher Maulana Muhammad Abdul Alim Siddiqui Rahimahullah the Quran answers and it says yes listen to Surah Al Hajj and then you'll understand this hadith about when the stones will speak the Quran addresses the people who are internally dead who are spiritually dead yes they have a PhD from MIT huh you've made it huh PhD from MIT but internally dead spiritually dead and the Quran says afalam yasiru fil ard come on will you not travel to the earth perchance that your dead hearts might come alive fatakuna lahum kulubu ya'akiluna biha so that with your dead hearts you might now be able to understand what the intellect could not understand not these ears so that with your heart you'll not be able to hear what otherwise you could not hear for in absar truly it's not these eyes which are blind what is blind is the heart which is inside the chest and so when the stones speak and say Muslim Abdullah there's a Jew hiding behind me come and kill him it is with the heart of the Muslim the believer that you can hear the stones and we have come today to say to you the stones have already begun to speak the stones are speaking in the holy land now when a 12 year old boy picks up a stone in his hand and throws it at an Israeli tank of course made in the United States of America where else huh? that stone delivers a blow more powerful than your Pakistani nuclear weapons more powerful 
that stone shatters him internally demoralizes him throws him into a state of internal confusion and disarray and the stones have already begun to speak in the holy land I wonder when will the stones begin to speak in Pakistan once the stones have begun to speak the countdown has begun for the return of the Khilafah the government of Egypt can like it or not the government of Egypt could be comfortable with it or not it makes no difference the Khilafah is coming back the secularized elite who control Pakistan from day one to this day and who control the Ministry of Finance whether they are comfortable with it or they're not whether they agree with it or they don't it makes no difference it's irrelevant the Khilafat is coming back the countdown has begun we don't have to argue with them to convince them that time Guzar Gaya the Khilafat is now coming back what is important for us now is to decide today today on which Kishti are you are you on that boat the one that pledges loyalty to the secular state founded on shirk or are you on the boat which will lead to the return of the Khilafat that is a decision you must make today if you are going to be a part of the struggle for the return of the Khilafah for that day when a man would arise from Medina from amongst the people of Medina and would hurry to Mecca who is he? Imam al-Mahdi if you are to be a part of that caravan to welcome him what do you do today? before we answer that question let us attempt to do something that perhaps needs to be done today in this hall in this hall it is simple the first time when Allah sent the Messiah al-Masih and kept his promise to Banu Israel you know that Allah is not like Washington eh? when Allah gives his word he keeps his word when the time came to send the Messiah now listen carefully Allah raised the man and that man said the Messiah is coming is coming is coming who was that man and when Isa alayhi salam as a grown-up adult now came to the Holy Land he came in front of that man and that man said here he is this is the Messiah this is the man you've been waiting on who was that man come on somebody Yahya alayhi salam mashallah John the Baptist Yahya alayhi salam similarly does it not make sense why could he not understand it when the Messiah is to come back Allah raises a man and when that man is raised he, perform, he performs the same mission the same mission that Yahya al-Islam performed to announce the coming of the Messiah and when Isa al-Islam comes down on the wings of two angels his hands are he comes down in front of that man and that man says here he is this is the son of Mary 
There was a fellow in Qadian who said he was the fulfillment eh, of the prophecy of the return of the son of Mary. But he had a serious problem. The Messiah who is to come is the son of Mary. And Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was the son of a Punjabi woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> he had a problem. This man who says, here he is, this is the son of Mary. That is Imam al-Mahdi. That is Imam al-Mahdi. It fits. It fits into the historical model perfectly. And yet, and I have to say it today, please do not be annoyed with me. It has to be said. Allama Iqbal is my teacher. Yes, he's my teacher. But even a teacher can make a mistake. And it is not in any way disrespectful or uncharitable of a student to point out that the teacher has made a mistake. Not just a mistake. He made a mountain of a mistake. A mountain of a mistake. When he rejected belief in the Mahdi. In consequence of which generation after generation of Islamic scholarship is now following him and rejecting belief in the Mahdi. Now then, having said that, and I wanted to say it in this hall, having said that, what do we do? What do we do after today? If someone is on that kishti, you know, the modern secular nation state, you have no part. You have no part whatsoever of this caravan leading to the return of the Khilafat. But if you get off that ship and you want to come on board this ship, remember, there is no Islam without the Jama'ah. Who said that? Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If there were to have been a prophet after me, it would have been him, said the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And there is no jama'ah without a sam'u wa ta'atu. The obligation to listen and to obey. And therefore there is no Islam without the Amir. You cannot be a part of the struggle for the return of the Khilafah. No. Unless during this period of time of fitan, when Allah has taken away the Khilafah, and Allah will bring it back when Allah chooses to bring it back. During this period of time, unless you are a member of a Jama'ah with the Amir, and you put your hands in his hands and you give a pledge and when you give your word you keep your word and then he enforces the deen on the members of the jama'ah no nonsense islam unless and until you do that you cannot be a part of the struggle for the restoration of the khilafah i was born in the island of Trinidad, off the coast of Venezuela, far away from ancestors who came from Hyderabad, Deccan, Devsaw Salpehli. But I studied Islam in Pakistan many years ago. And in 1996, I came here because Dr. Isra Rahmat had this book uh, translated into Urdu and published, and he wanted me to come here. When I came and I saw his Jamaat, I fell in love with it. Chota say, small but beautiful. And I remembered the hadith which Al Azhar University had quoted after the abolition of the Khilafat. Whosoever dies without the obligation of bay'ah, the imposition of bay'ah to listen and to obey the emir. You die 
the death of Jahiliya. And so I put my hands in the hands of Dr. Israel Ahmad and became a member of this Jamaat, Tanzim Islami. I've never regretted it. Alhamdulillah, I believe I became a better Muslim. This, this is the important message of this conference today. To be a part of the struggle for the restoration of the Khilafah, the return of the Khilafah, you must be within a jama'ah. You cannot be a flock of sheep without a shepherd. Nor can you have a shepherd who cannot recognize a wolf when he sees one. Today we have shepherds whose salaries are being paid by the wolves. And so we end with this that the countdown has begun. The stones, the stones are speaking in the Holy Land. No one can stop them from speaking. None. The stones will continue to speak, but only the heart of the believer can hear it. And this is why, as we struggle for the return of the Khilafat, it is important for us to direct an internal struggle, for the heart to be turned to Allah, not to the Toyota Camry, for the heart to be turned to Allah, that we should give this commitment to Allah. In the salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Sabkuch, sabkuch, sabkuch. Verily, my prayer and my service of sacrifice and my very living and my very dying, everything, everything, everything is for you. That cannot take place until this heart is changed. Until no enters into this heart. That is our message today. That we may turn to Allah. When a people live for Allah, then such a people will die for Allah. Anyone who is prepared to die for Allah has power greater than even their nuclear weapons. May Allah bless the efforts of all those who today decide to become a part of the struggle. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawwabur rahim birahmatika ya arhamur rahimin.